And a very good afternoon, everybody. You're very welcome here to a breezy Gaelic grounds in Drogheda for this little National Football League uh, Division 2 semi-final between Armagh and uh, Leash. As you can see, conditions, a lovely, beautiful, sunny afternoon here on the banks of the Boyne. But uh, that uh, breeze, very, very significant. And what we can make out, Leash look as if they're going to be playing uh, 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 into it in the, in the uh, first half here. So we'll wait and see just how significant and what uh, big a part the breeze will play. But it is a very strong wind here. So so it is uh, going to be certainly a factor, yes. But both these teams coming in on the back of the recent group campaigns. Straight away, we can give you the teams. There are a couple of changes uh, for either side. For, uh, for Nula, McKenna is not starting this afternoon. For Armagh, Eve Lavery wearing number 21 comes in in her place. And for uh, Leash, Alana Havel starting in place at centre field. Well, we give you the Armagh team there. You see us on your screens. Anna Carr of Carrie Cruppen lining out between the posts. We have Shauna Gray, Clona McCambridge and Grace Ferguson making up the full back line. Tierna Grimes, Lauren McConville and uh, Kate Toe uh, comprising that uh, half back line at centre field. Neve Marley and Blahine uh, Mackin. Then it's uh, Catherine Marley, Catherine, sister of Neve, of course, the midfield uh, midfielder for Armagh. Then we have Eve Lavery replacing Fanula McKenna and Neve Coleman wearing the number 12 jersey. And the full forward line, the team captain, Amy Mackin. It's Aoife McCoy on the edge of the square. And atop of the left, we have Neve Reel of Silver Bridge. Now, turning to the Leash team, Leash finishing runners up in their uh, section uh, uh, from the recent uh, group stage. Emer Barry of Shanahoe is in goal. The full back line, Clodagh Dunn, Amy Potts, and Amy Kelly, the captain. The half back line is Rachel Williams, Ellen Healy, and Anna Healy. At centre field, we have Jane Moore and Alana Havel wearing number 19. Then it's Emma Lawler, Fiona Dooley, and Aaron Fitzpatrick. And the full forward line, Mo Nearney, Laura Marie Marr. And at top of the left, it's Shifra Havel. We're about to have a minute's silence here at the Gaelic grounds in memory of Tom Madigan, who's a member who was a member of the old mill and the St. Uh, Senans Club in Limerick, who sadly passed away, or Yashte Gorevanam. Yes, uh, Tom, who was uh, involved with the Old Mill and the St. Senans Club in Limerick. We're about to have our national anthem now. Aaron Naveen. Yes, and there you have our national anthem, Aaron Naveen. So uh, we're almost uh, ready for the start of our first of our weekend Division 2 semi-finals, the Little National Football League semi-finals. Armagh going into this game uh, on the back of three successive uh, wins in Division uh, 2B. Delighted to be joined on co-commentary this afternoon by former Armagh star Kiva Marley Morgan. Kiva, who's uh, two sisters starting today, Catherine and also Neve, and uh, another sister, Sarah, is on the uh, subs bench for the Orchard County this afternoon. Uh, Kiva. Uh, what are you expecting today from your own county? What kind of challenge are you expecting from Leash this afternoon? Well, I suppose, you know, Leash have um, beaten Tipperary and Clare, convincingly enough, you know, put up good performances there. Um, beaten by Kerry, as you said, Armagh have beaten Monaghan, Tyrone and Cavan. 
Leash will go in as underdogs, but I mean, you know, they're up from Division 3. They'll relish this challenge as going in as underdogs. Arma, I think, will have a lot to prove here. I feel like they haven't really stepped up to the mark in terms of, like, putting teams to bed convincingly. So it'll be really interesting to see, you know, do they stick to their game plan and do they show, you know, Leash a wee bit of their superiority here today? Yes, Leash stepping up, having, of course, one promotion from Division 3 last season. Arma looking to improve on last year. They were beaten by in the Championship in the All-Ireland, beaten at the quarter-final stage by eventual champions. Mead didn't actually make the knockout stages in Div the Division 2 league last season. So they'll be hoping to uh, put that right here this afternoon and uh, claim that place in the final in a couple of weeks' time. Jonathan Murphy of Carlow is today's uh, referee. So just a reminder again, Eve Lavery wearing number 21. She's starting for the Arma girls this afternoon and for Leash number 19, Lana Havel starting at number 19. They are the two changes uh, in either uh, team. So we're ready to get play underway. The referee throws the uh, ball in here at a very breezy Gaelic grounds here in Drogheda. And straight away it's Leash on the attack. Leash, as you can see, uh, shooting into the scoreboard end. They're playing into that very, very strong breeze. And they're on the attack now straight away coming forward with this one. It's Aron Fitzpatrick. Aron, one of the real key forwards in this team. Part of the O'Connor Cup winning team with University Limerick uh, recently. Now she's got Emma Lawler in support. She's taking on her marker. She's still soloing forward. Looking for a bit of space, looking for a teammate now, and she finds Laura Marie Mar out towards the 45 metre line. It comes and uh, Leash. Well, I think they're probably going to decide to try to play this one short because that breeze, no point uh, going direct with it. I think they're going to have to try and walk it a bit closer to goal because that is a huge breeze to have to deal with. And now they're over towards the far side, as you can see. And uh, Leash now getting their plenty of players getting their hands on the ball. Anna Healy now in possession, just inside her own half of the field. And uh, out towards the centre now it comes once again so Leash having suffered that uh, heavy defeat in their most recent match going down conceding 4-17 to Kerry but uh, they were already into the knockout stages it was either a case of first or second in that uh, group uh, but they suffered a heavy defeat so they'll be hoping that their confidence hasn't suffered as a result of that but they did win their earlier matches beating Clare 2-12 to 2-7 in their first fixture and then overturning a, a Tipperary that was a, a tight enough match 2-8 to 2-6 in the second round of uh, games and uh, a challenge going in there Jane Moore just bumping into our opponent and she gives away the free and that's the uh, first uh, free of the afternoon and it's going to be Armagh now so Armagh will be looking to push home their advantage but it's been Leash who've, been, who've started the better but Armagh with this very strong breeze I'm sure the message is to try and rack up the scores here and try to build that lead Lauren McConville now has it that ball sent forward now here's, here's uh, Kate Toe coming on to it now for Armagh starting this game as uh, Kiva said as uh, favourites and uh, of course they're a senior championship team as well Leash will be operating the intermediate this summer once again having uh, reached the semi-finals in the Intermediate Championship last season. The ball falls, goes all the way back to goalkeeper Anna Carr. So most of the early pressing here had been done by Leash. That ball played out towards the centre. Lauren McConville now picks this one up. Now trying to round her marker. Gets around her pretty easily. Fiona Dooley up towards the centre. It goes now. This is promising for Armagh. The first time now that they've really broken inside the Leash half of the field. This one picked up now by uh, Blohin Macken. Inside the 45 metre line. Decides to try and go long with it. She went direct with it. The ball now is bobbling around. A couple of players trying to get their hands on it and that's going to be a free uh, the leash player winning the free uh, it was uh, Amy Kelly the team captain and uh, Amy well she'd be looking to uh, I suppose uh, draw and uh, show a bit of inspiration as well being the captain of this team and uh, leash going in here as underdogs with a big step up for them here this afternoon but uh, having won promotion last season out of uh, division three but uh, certainly a lot of progress been made by leash having uh, claim this uh, semi-final spot that ball is won well by Amy Potts coming forward with it now big physical presence tries to uh, pick out one of our teammates doesn't quite work out on that occasion here is Neve Marley now coming running forward through the hands now it goes for Man and or uh, Armagh I should say coming on the attack this is promising now uh, towards the right hand side that one is sent in and it's gone in and it has gone over the crossbar we have the first score of the game and it's an Armagh score and uh, Yes, it's gone over the crossbar. The player that has got it, it's uh, Neve Reel. It is. It's Neve Reel. In fact, it is Neve Reel with the point. So that uh, the first real chance we've had of the game, and it's over the crossbar. Ama uh, with the early advantage here, just over three minutes gone in the opening half. Two teams playing a very similar game here, Colm. You know, they have a lot of people behind the ball, a lot of tenacious tackling. They're waiting for someone to make a mistake, and that's what happened. Leash made the mistake, and Armagh capitalised on it. Now that ball, you can just see the effect there. The almost a boomerang. It uh, walked its way back, heading towards the 45-meter line. 
line with the wind holding it up and uh, here now Leash coming for out of defence with it it's with uh, Jane Moore Jane Moore now support coming from Emma Lawler Emma Lawler now in towards the centre it goes Armagh anxious now not to foul but this is a good run forward now by her own Fitzpatrick still racing forward with it now looks very lively here very dangerous sending that one in tried to pick out the pass but intercepted brilliantly and it was Neve Marley who got a hand in there and that one has walked down up over halfway now it's with Neve Coleman Neve Coleman now coming running forward with it now nobody coming to meet her here she's got uh, plenty of room the uh, the Arma or the leash defence opening up like the Red Sea and a good uh, play in the end by the goalkeeper she was off her line quickly she runs into a challenge as well both players are actually feeling the effects of that and uh, Emo Barry has stayed down the leash uh, goalkeeper but out come the O'Moore girls they have it now around the centre Jane Moore now in possession has support coming from Emma Lawler Lawler now just uh, stepping on the brakes looking for a bit of support Leash now looking for a responding point having given away the first uh, score of the game referee has blown his whistle and he's going over now and uh, the Leash goalkeeper still on the ground Emer Barry game just really yet to settle down but uh, it is one point to no score that early point from uh, Neve Reel after three and a half minutes of play and uh, that collision at the other end no intent and it was just a six of one and a half a dozen at the other but it was a, an opportunity of another Armagh score and the referee now Jonathan Murphy going in to, to see if uh, Emer Barry is uh, how bad this uh, knock might be just to still on the ground as you can see but uh, conditions here uh, play, obviously playing a huge part we saw from that kick out um, so what, what, what will what will the, the tactics be or how do you play how do you uh, play into that breeze is there a specific way that you need to play uh, Kiva? Well I suppose you'd be wanting to play the short pass and you'd need your full back line to really be on point and making those runs sharp and be confident of getting the ball and uh, glad but to see that Emer yeah, Emer Barry's up on our feet and we're ready to go and she ready showed great courage there, Colin. That's exactly what you want your goalkeeper to do, especially when you see Amy Mackin coming to you. Absolutely, Amy Mackin, the real uh, star performer in this uh, Armagh team. We haven't seen much of her yet, but uh, I'm sure that will change as this game goes on. She really has been a uh, tremendous 2020 Player of the Year, of course, Senior Player of the Year. That ball now, Armagh, working it well. They have possession now with Neve Coleman. Neve Coleman now, that ball sent on as far as Blaheen Mackin, still running forward now right through the centre here. There could be a chance of a goal here. She goes for power and pace, and it takes a deflection. Good save in the end, and it's gone at the expense of a 45, but a glorious opportunity there for a goal for uh, Armagh getting in behind that Leash defence and that's the second time they've found a gap right through the middle and a good defending in the end by Leash but uh, well you'd probably say Leash the goal uh, the Leash goal there leading a charmed life on that occasion and uh, the ball is kicked back out now it's going to be a 45 for uh, Armagh and a chance for them now to get another score on the board another knock being picked up by a Leash player so a little bit stop start here in the second injury with uh, what six and a half minutes gone in this uh, opening half so it's Armagh leading here by 1.2 no score in the first of uh, the Division 2, the Little uh, Division 2 semi-finals, Kerry and Monaghan, uh, they clash tomorrow over in Tume. So now that's in the other semi-final, Blahin Mackin out with a follow-up attempt here of this 45. This one, it's going to fall short. Two players just let it run past them and in the end, nobody gets a touch on it. And that one sails out harmlessly right and wide. First uh, wide of the afternoon, an Armagh wide. And uh, so it stays 1.2, no score. In uh, very breezy conditions here, as you can see, at uh, the Gaelic grounds in Drogheda. The Gaelic grounds here, well, uh, consider the county grounds still officially the loud county grounds, but uh, hasn't been too many county matches here the last couple of seasons. Uh, was the men's team home ground, but uh, uh, last year Haggardstown uh, hosted loads of uh, matches, and uh, this year RD is now considered the home for this uh, season. The ball is dropped around the centre of the field, but Leash uh, respond with their own Fitzpatrick getting her hands on it once again. She does look dangerous and uh, trying to hold her up there. K Kate uh, uh, Toe trying to get her challenge in. It's uh, now with uh, Laura Marie Marr, far side of the field. That ball played in towards the centre. Owen Fitzpatrick tries to get a touch on it, but that's intercepted again by the Armagh defence. And now the counter attack might be on here for Armagh. That ball sent down. Dangerous looking ball. Uh, Aoife McCoy trying to get hold of that one, and she does well. Coming, running forward with it now. Player in support. This is Shauna Gray. Shauna Gray, a little bit too much on that one. And it finds its way back to the leash goalkeeper. Just didn't quite work out there for Armagh on that occasion. And the goalkeeper. Aimer Barry, she's been very busy in the first uh, five, six minutes of this game as uh, Leash now coming out of defence with it once again, up over the 45 metre line, that blood played in towards the centre Rachel Williams now has it, Leash on the attack they have it now with Laura Marie Maher up over halfway here come a Leash now, trying to build now something this is a uh, promising looking. It's with their own Fitzpatrick once more. Goes for the pass inside. Now can they execute this one and try to get a score on the board? It's still with uh, Laura Marie Marr. 
Short on options here. She has to be careful not to give away possession. Arma just trying to close down the angles for Emma Lawler now has it. Emma Lawler now right and running into that breeze, lurking through the uh, Arma defence. This looks promising. Flicks it to her outside. Oh, it didn't quite work out. And Claude McCambridge is back there to rescue it for Arma just for the moment there. It looked as if there might have been a goal chance, a real goal chance on for Leash. But Arma living dangerously, but they've escaped on that occasion thanks to Claude McCambridge's interception. Oh man, a little bit of a let off there for the Orchard girls, but they have possession now inside the leash half of the field and towards the middle now, sent long by Blahin Mackin. That's an inviting looking ball, but the referee has blown his whistle and that is going to be another stoppage and play is going to have to be called uh, back in fact and the leash player is going to be spoken to and it's, uh, it's uh, Fiona Dooley. Uh, just uh, being the tick of the name being taken by the referee Jonathan Murphy Jonathan from County Carlow so it is going to be this free and it's Blahin Mackin that's going to take it she decides now to go in towards the centre gets the return pass Armagh now coming forward with it again inside the 45 metre line player who has it there momentarily was Grace Ferguson Grace Ferguson out to Blahin Mackin once again doing well Blahin Mackin now trying to go it all on her own well, she, uh, they're closing her down two or three uh, blue shorts around her referee signals that that is going to be a free out for leash and a little bit isolated in there wasn't she hadn't done all that many options Blahin yeah but sometimes she takes too much out of the ball you know and the passes are long before that um, so you know she has Amy up there she has good forwards you need to use them a lot more especially some people think when you've got this breeze that it's a help and sometimes it can be a hindrance and here comes that's a poor clearance and that's uh, going to be punished by Amy Mackin leash not clearing their lines and it's over the crossbar and Amy Mackin has got the score Amy Mackin now making it uh, two points to no score but that was a real gift there of uh, a point for Amy Mackin uh, the leash uh, leash not clearing the lines it was a uh, poor clearance out of defence an attempted clearance and Amy Mackin uh, just finding a little bit of space and popping it over the crossbar and now you can see real pressure being put on because all Armagh's half back line have pushed up because they know this kick out is hard to get out so Armagh have you know Leash have a lot of work to do here here comes the kick out now from uh, Emer Barry just being held up inside the 45 and the hands go on and it's Arma who uh, win it Blahin Mackin down towards the danger zone this uh, could be an opportunity and it's in the back of the net and it is it is Amy Mackin who has got the goal Amy Mackin has got the goal and it's now one goal and a point to no score the kick out Arma gaining possession sent in and in the end Amy Mackin as we know she well right player in the right place really now, Amy Mackin's not going to miss opportunities like that and now the kick out again the wind a major factor and Leash now really facing into an uphill challenge here in this first half they've given uh, they've conceded now uh, the last uh, they've conceded now the last uh, three scores uh, Reneve Real Amy Mackin and now the goal as well so let's see now what uh, Leash can make of this one they're coming forward with it it's a Ron Fitzpatrick running forward through the over the 45 mile line intercepted brilliantly great defending there by Lauren and McConville Lauren McConville gets that ball out and Armagh have uh, managed to intercept that and turn over possession sent long this time by Blahin Mackin over towards the far side of the field so 1-2-2 two, two, no score Leash yet to get on the score sheet into these very difficult conditions the ball has gone out of play and it's going to be a line ball for uh, Leash and uh, well the underdogs going into this uh, match now uh, really facing a difficult task to walk themselves back into it we've seen just glimpses perhaps their own Fitzpatrick in particular what she's capable of but uh, so far they haven't uh, really forced the issue here as uh, they will have that wind advantage in the second half here's uh, her own Fitzpatrick far side of the uh, field running into a challenge does well though gets it away Leash coming on the attack now that ball sent dangerously forward that's a good turn and now perhaps a chance here player who has it is uh, Laura Marie Marr she's still running forward with it it's in fact Mo Nerny Mo Nerny goes for the opportunity just didn't have enough height in it and it was a comfortable enough save for uh, Anna Carr though she had to be alert to it she's done well and she's uh, found her full back Claude McCambridge that was a little bit more promising there for Leash but they may need to make those sort of opportunities count and uh, no point in uh, not getting a score off it having done so well to walk themselves into that uh, scoring position but Armagh now again coming uh, breaking at the other end up over halfway and uh, ball now on the ground referee blows his whistle that's going to be a free out the free one by uh, Jane Moore Jane Moore who uh, has a sister Anna part of the leash panel as well a lot of sisters four sets of sisters in the leash panel and uh, likewise a lot of sisters as well in the Armagh panel as well and uh, just a little bit of attention now needed and another stoppage in this uh, opening quarter or so. We have 13 and a half minutes gone. The goal uh, from Amy Mackin arriving after uh, 12 or so minutes of play, giving Armagh that uh, early five point advantage here. And uh, getting to our feet now, it's uh, Catherine Marley. 
and uh, Catherine is going to go and uh, another stoppage as well Jane Moore now picking up a slight knock as well but uh, nothing too serious and so we are ready to go and uh, resume play with this uh, short uh, free four leash played in towards the centre coming forward now with this one Clodagh Dunn Clodagh Dunn now sending it on picking out Ellen Healy now Ellen Healy now from the Port Leash Club here's Anna Healy Anna Healy now coming forward with it this is working out nicely here for uh, Fiona Dooley. Fiona Dooley now sending Laura Marie Maron away. Flicks the tour outside. Could be a goal chance on here. Oh, smothered by the goalkeeper. Back out it comes. The chance was there for Alana Havel. The goalkeeper, though, did quite well. But in the end, it was really straight at the goalkeeper. Alana Havel was the player with the opportunity. So, uh, Leash coming close there to getting really back into this game with a goal. That's the closest they've come to uh, scoring a goal in this uh, opening quarter or so. And uh, well worked move, you'd have to say it was. But... Uh, in the end, they don't uh, take their opportunity. And now, from, from, uh, Armagh looking to punish them up over halfway. This is a uh, danger now for Leash. And again, uh, right through the centre here. This is uh, very promising for Armagh. Ball now played into space. Running after this one now, it's uh, Amy Mackin. Amy Mackin, she just about keeps it in play. Looking for a free, I think. But uh, no, the referee wasn't having any of it. Amy Potts now sending this one long over towards the far side. And uh, Rachel Williams now in possession for Leash. Coming, soloing forward with it, has support. Well, Leash, I suppose, will be taking a little bit of heart from that goal-scoring opportunity, but the bottom line is they have still yet to register a score. Here is Laura Marie Marr coming forward with it once again, the ball dropping, a couple of players jostling for it. Well won by uh, Armagh, and they have it once more now. Blahin and uh, Mackin getting her hands on it, and coming forward now in droves now, the uh, Armagh looking to try and... Uh, I suppose stamp their authority and with the with the wind at their backs as well, trying to get scores on the board. They have it now with Neve Marley. Now Neve Marley got that uh, kick away, but didn't find one of her teammates, and it's been intercepted by the leash fullback Amy Potts. And just as I say that, she's given it away. This is a uh, danger now. Arma looking for the score. That one is sent in. Dangerous looking one, and that one has gone over the crossbar. It's another score, and it's Eve Lavery who's got it this time. And that one uh, again given away by uh, leash in defence, and Eve Mar and uh, Eve uh, Lavery even. Uh, punishing uh, Leash, so it's one goal and three to no score. But uh, how crucial might that goal miss at the other end be uh, come the end of this game? Uh, yeah, Kiva? but look, Anna Kiar is a fantastic keeper. You need to be sidestepping and taking the ball around her. You know, and you'd hope that Leash would learn from that because that's two kind of opportunities on goal they've missed. But that opportunity there, Armagh seem to be maximising all their chances when they turn over Leash. Lauren McConville turned the ball over straight up the pitch, but the, the conditions are proving really difficult, Colin. They really are. They don't fear anybody. Absolutely. Well, it's another kick out now for the uh, leash goalkeeper, Emar Barry. And uh, from the 20 metre line, from her hands, didn't get too much distance on that one either. It falls nicely as far as Eve Lavery looking for a second successive point. Walk through. This is a dangerous opportunity. And this one is uh, sent in. And that one has gone over the crossbar. Another point for Armagh. And now they are certainly beginning to pick off those uh, scores. And it is over the uh, crossbar. I think it was a. Uh, Neve Coleman. It, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was um, a point from Neve Coleman there. So nice spread of scores now. Neve Coleman getting her first point of the uh, afternoon to make it now one goal and four to no score. Seven points of an advantage here with 17 minutes gone in this opening half. And from that kick out here, they come again now. This is Catherine Marley. Catherine Marley goes for the goal. Saved by the bouge of uh, the goalkeeper. But now in the follow-up, Catherine Marley sticks it in the back of the net. And Catherine Marley gets Armagh's second goal of the afternoon. Good save initially by the left bouge of uh, of uh, Emer Barry but uh, on the follow up uh, your sister Catherine making no mistake on that occasion and following it in well and now it's two goals and four two no score ten points and uh, the second goal and coming at just the right time as far as Armagh are concerned just before the uh, water break uh, Kiva yeah Armagh again a bit of momentum here they've kind of settled a wee bit more definitely pushing up on the kickout is really playing in their favour like Jane Moore did well to win the kickout there but then Armagh's tenacious tackling let them turn it over and led to that goal chance an opportunity there so so despite the best efforts of Emer Barry to keep that one out of the back of the net making the initial save there was uh, no denying uh, Catherine Marley with the follow up and so it is now Armagh two goals and four points Leash no score and Leash really are going to have to try and uh, well regroup and try to get something going and try to get themselves back into this one they need a few scores on the board before half time to give themselves any kind of chance for the second uh, half they have the they will have the, that very strong breeze in the second half but they certainly won't want to uh, go any further behind in this game 10 points at this stage of the game is even enough to try and make up and just looking out there the, their manager Donny Brennan he's having awards with them to try 
try and I suppose keep their confidence levels up just inter- is, uh, issuing some instructions to them to try and uh, I suppose convince them that they're still in this game but uh, they've had uh, had little glimpses here and there the goal chance one or two other nice little runs alright but uh, the scoreboard doesn't tell a lie they have yet to get a point how, um, how demoralising is that at this stage of the game Kiva? It's very demoralising because they play really really good off the shoulder running and they're very strong ball carriers but you always want that score to settle you down so look it is demoralising but you just have to keep working on it OK, so we're almost ready to resume after that uh, goal, that second goal for Armagh from Catherine Marley, making it two goals and four to no score in this uh, little Ladies National Football League Division 2 semi-final. And uh, the winners of this will be advancing to the final in a fortnight's time. That other semi-final, as we mentioned, taking place tomorrow over in Tum. That's uh, Kerry against Monaghan. Kerry looking very strong in this uh, campaign, having won those uh, earlier matches, uh, finishing top of uh, the of Division 2A, uh, beating Leash in that final game uh, recently, that uh, third round match. Here are our man now, again looking to push home their advantage here. Neve Marley trying to get her hands on this ball, but it's been intercepted and Leash now. Well, they have to scrap for everything here, living off scraps at the moment. Here's Jane Moore now has it, drops the ball though, might get a second bite of it. Gets it back and uh, Emma Lawler now picking up that loose one. Has support now coming from uh, Rowan Fitzpatrick and see she sends it on. As Kiva was mentioning, they are dangerous off the shoulder and nice, some couple of nice patches, passages of play. But can they now get it, make it count on the scoreboard? Here's Laura Marie Marr walking herself in and this is a chance. She has been fouled. A foul on uh, L- L- Laura Marie Marr and this is a chance. But this is not an easy one into that very, very strong breeze. And coming up to take this one, it is going to be Emma Lawler. Emma Lawler now with this one. This is a big kick here to try and get Leash uh, off the mark and give themselves, give them a little, little bit of a hope. 20 metres out, as you can see, shooting into the scoreboard end. And a big kick here for Emma Lawler. Can she send this one over? It's a high kick. That's looking accurate. And it is over the crossbar. And they do eventually get a score on the board. And it's Emma Lawler who has got it from that uh, free with, uh, what, 20 minutes, just under 20 minutes gone in the first half. Came from a lot of strong running from their number five, Leash Rachel Williams. She does an awful lot of attacking. Um, Eve Lavery would need to watch that because she's not tracking her. So we have... Uh, Leash's first point. They've had to wait almost 20 minutes for it to arrive, but it's come. And now let's see if they can push on from from here. Laura Marie Marr in possession once again runs into a challenge. That was Jane Moore on the ground. Jane Moore just feeling the effects of that one, but uh, getting up to her feet. Uh, Rowan Fitzpatrick giving chase after this one, but that's when being intercepted once more. That ball sent forward now uh, by by uh, it was uh, Eve Lavery who got her hands in it. Referee has blown his whistle. It's going to be a free for Armagh. Free for Armagh. And it's going to be taken. It's going to actually be taken by Blahid, uh, Blahin. Blahin Mackin's going to take it. Very by physical game, Colm, I have to say. The ref's letting it flow, but it is very physical. There's a lot of hard hits going in. Absolutely, yeah. And a few players have uh, gone down as well, needing uh, tra- attention as well. And uh, that ball now with, uh, with uh, Armagh. That's, uh, this is uh, promising. Player in possession now is Ethan McCoy. Ethan McCoy just holding it up now, has support. This one comes all the way back. This one is sent in, oh, comes back down off the post, back down off the upright. And uh, that one, uh, the woodwork coming to Leash's rescue on that occasion. But uh, Leash have managed to retain possession. Running into that uh, challenge there was uh, Amy Kelly, the captain, also full back there with Amy Potts. But Leash, uh, that, that one, well, not the best of uh, passes in the end. And coming away right now, it's Blahin Macken once again. She's been very, very involved in this first half now. Most things going through uh, are involved with her. And that one is sent in and it's gone. And it's into the back of the net. I think it was uh, Neve Coleman, I think, has got the score. Neve Reel, was it? Or is it Neve? I think it's Neve Reel, in fact. Uh, it is Neve Reel. Yes, Neve Reel with our second goal of the afternoon. And just when uh, Leash having got that opening score and uh, Armagh going down, missing that sc- point scoring opportunity, they have now followed up with their third goal of the uh, afternoon. 3 4 to a solitary point. And the ball now. And again, the effects of the wind carrying that ball over the sideline. But Neve Reel is the player who's got the tour goal for Armagh. 22 minutes almost gone in this uh, in this uh, first half. And now Armagh again looking to turn the screw. Another opportunity here on this one. It's uh, all too easy. It's Ethan McCoy who's got that one. So plenty of players now getting in on the scoring act. Ethan McCoy sending that one over. Three goals and five to a point. And uh, this is going to be a long way back here for Leash, isn't it, Kiva? Yeah, it is going to be. And it's clear to see that Ronan Murphy, their manager, our mass manager, has told them to go for goals. And I could see him telling them that at the water break. But that came from tenacious tackling from Blaheen Mack. And she's working really, really hard there. And it's great to see, you know, that they're getting more confidence here as they go on. But Leash is going to have to really work hard. Absolutely, yeah. Well, 
And uh, that uh, ball is on the ground. It's a free to Leash, far side of the field. Our own Fitzpatrick now. Well, Leash won't certainly give up the chase, but uh, it looks a bit forlorn at this stage unless something dramatic happens. Laura Marie Marr in possession now, looking to get round her challenger. She's still got it, tries to pick out the pass, but that one breaks down. And uh, a lot of uh, Fleish is uh, passing, breaking down around that Armagh half-back line. Two Armagh players going in on the same ball here. One of those was Grace Ferguson and does extremely well. And again, two players challenging for the same ball. It finds its way as far as Lauren McConville. Kicks it out towards this near side. She's got Tierna Grimes in support. Tierna Grimes now chipping this uh, ball down. That's a very good ball into space. And running on to this one now, it's uh, Shauna Gray. Shauna Gray has stayed forward. Comes out as far as uh, Neve Coleman. Neve Coleman now flicking it to her outside. Here's Tierna Grimes. Uh, Alma, you feel they're probably confidence now, level soaring, and plenty of players now trying to, uh, staying forward and trying to get into scoring opportunities. Catherine Marley has won the free, and this certainly within range as well. And this uh, and great opportunity of another Alma score, but as things stand, 3 5 to a point, 24 minutes gone in the first half. Leash have a real problem here trying to break the ball through their own 45. You know that it's very hard because when they look up, they've so much ground to cover to try and get to the goals. And when the wind's in your face, it's very difficult. And still, a final pass is letting them down. But that's a good score from Armagh. Yes, that's Amy Mackin with the uh, point to make it three goals and six to a solitary point with almost 25 minutes gone in this opening half. This game at the moment looks as if it's only going one way, really. And Armagh so far justifying the favourites tie going into this game. Referee blowing his whistle. And uh, I think are we. Thought there might have been a change being contemplated, but not uh, yet. Referee happy, I think, to let play continue with this kick out now from uh, Emer Barry. Emer Barry again dropping short of the 45 meter line. Good hands there by J Jane Moore coming running forward with it. Now, is there a is there a kick and leash before half time here to give themselves any kind of chance in the second half? Here's Mo Nerney now. Mo Nerney now up over the 45 meter line. Still Mo Nerney player running off the shoulder. This is promising. It's uh, Rachel Williams down towards the corner. Back out it comes again. Now it's with uh, Fiona Dooley. Fiona Dooley now support from Emma Lawler. Lawler now has a look up. Plays that ball forward, but good reading of the situation there by Yama. And that one is cut out. Good uh, defending back there. And it was uh, Catherine Marley who had uh, who'd, uh, run all the way back there and giving her defence a bit of a dig out. She's looking for the return pass again. Neve Marley getting her hands in it. Now it's with uh, Aoife McCoy again coming running forward. Still Aoife McCoy goes for the forward pass. And uh, that one met down towards this near side. This is a promising build up here by Armagh. Can they finish it off at a point? Ethan McCoy goes to ground, picks it up at the second attempt. Just inside the 20 metre line, keeps it in play. Back out it comes now as far as Neve Reel. Neve Reel now cutting away between a couple of uh, leash players. Still Reel now has to hold it up, looking for Tierna Grimes. Tierna Grimes now finding, uh, pick, uh, playing it all the way back to Catherine Marley again, across the 45 metre line. Now it's with uh, Blaheen Mackin. Blaheen Mackin now. Here's Lauren McConville. Lauren McConville down towards a little bit too high of a kick from McConville. Asking too much there of Eve Lavery. And that one goes out harmlessly out and wide. Armagh's second wide of this uh, opening half. But uh, very much Armagh, very much in control of it here. Three goals and six points to a solitary uh, point. And, uh, well, as you mentioned, the uh, Armagh manager, uh, Ronan Murphy, uh, telling his uh, players perhaps to try and finish this one off as a contest by going for goals. Um, you feel there's perhaps one or two more in them before half time even, uh, Kiva? There could be, yeah, because their tails are up here and they're pressing this kick out so well. And uh, from that kick out, it is uh, Neve Marley who has it. She's happy to take a point, I think she is, and she sticks it over the crossbar. Neve Marley with the score. Another one on the board for Armagh. That makes it three goals and seven to a solitary point. This uh, not making pleasant reading if you're... Uh, a leash supporter certainly and uh, really faced uh, with a huge task now for the second half we're on the run into half time at this point and uh, that one again just falling short of the 45 meter line on this occasion the free has been given to leash it's Jane Moore who has it down towards the centre it goes but uh, Armagh picking up that loose one now it's with Shauna Gray Gray now back uh, in the Armagh half of the field there's uh, Clona McCambridge who has it ball now chip forward up over halfway. And uh, player looking for it now in space is uh, Neve Marley. Can she get a success, second successive point for herself? She goes for the pass, goes for the short one. Nice little bit of play, play here by Arma, walking it through the uh, hands. Neve Coleman now, player on the overlap, and that is looking good. And it's uh, Ethan McCoy who has got the point. Another score for Ethan McCoy. Another score for Arma. Three goals and eight 
to a point. They're showing no mercy here in the run into half time. Almost 28 minutes gone. We've only had one score for Leash. That effort after the water break from Emma Lawler. That's as good as it's got so far here for the uh, Leinster girls, the Leash girls. And uh, Lauren McConville now in possession. So uh, Arma, you'd have to say, with one foot in the Division 2 final. And uh, of course, looking to improve on last year, that uh, All Ireland quarter final championship against uh, Mead. But uh, in the league, they were slightly disappointing. Made a sluggish start to the campaign last year and paid the price. And uh, this is a, could be an opportunity here of a goal. And this one in the back of the net. And an excellent uh, score. A great individual goal indeed. And Armagh have got another goal on the board. And the player who has got that one is, uh, their, is their midfielder. It's uh, Blohin Macken. It is Blohin Macken who's got the goal. So another goal for, uh, for Armagh. We wondered whether there was another one in them before half time. And that's exactly the way it's turned out. Four goals on eight to a point with almost 29 minutes gone in this first half. So uh, almost impossible now to see a way back here for Leash. And uh, our man now. And Lauren McConville, I think, is going to get done here for charging because she moved her feet into the player. OK, so referee now producing the card, I think. Yes, he's going to have a word here with, uh, with Neve Marley. And uh, what I am very impressed with, Colin, is Jane Moore's fielding skills. You know, to be able to field the ball so well in that breeze, she really has been fantastic for Leash here. Okay, so we have uh, this uh, free for uh, Leash with uh, time now running out in this uh, first half, almost at the half hour mark. It is Jane Moore lining the f uh, free up and uh, goes backwards with it with, uh, to Clodagh Dunn. Clodagh Dunn now back in turn to Jane Moore once again. Jane Moore now fisting it into space. Clodagh Dunn now taking receipt of that pass, that return pass. And uh, still a couple of minutes now. We're into the almost into the first minute of uh, injury time at the end of this uh, first half. And Leash coming now forward with it. Here's Aaron Fitzpatrick. This is a danger. Could be a chance on here of a score. This one is sent in and that one is looking good. And it is over the crossbar. And that is a good score. And it is Aaron Fitzpatrick who has got the uh, point. Leash's second point and our first one from play indeed. And that very much against the run of play, you'd have to say as well, after all that uh, period of dominance at the other end from Armagh. So four goals and eight points to two points with uh, almost 31 minutes gone in this uh, first half. Leash from that kick out, gain possession now once again. Can they get another one on the board? So there's a player on the ground. Referee happy to play uh, the advantage here is Rachel Williams. This is a uh, danger. Rachel Williams trying to walk herself into a scoring position. Goes for the point and gets the point as well. Excellent score. So all of a sudden we've had back-to-back -back points from play from Leash. Uh, four goals and eight to uh, three points. That's what they are capable of. Uh, maybe it's a case of perhaps they are Matt. Uh, maybe uh, just uh, easing off the gas a little bit, not too sure, but uh, in credit to uh, Leash, they're not throwing in the towel, they're doing their best and they've got another couple of uh, points on the board, uh, well, Kiva. I suppose the question is now, Colm, have Armagh got a big enough lead? Because we can see that Leash are dangerous when they get on the ball. The problem is they're too far away from their own goal. When they have the breeze in the second half here, will they be more lethal on scores? So 4-8 to uh, 3 points, will uh, Leash be able to match what Armagh have done in the first half? Big question over whether they will be or not, but uh, Armagh have notched up the scores, perhaps should have even more on the board as well. But, uh, from that kick out now, Armagh a little bit untidy from them. And uh, the ball now, is, well, probably Armagh will be the happier to hear half time in terms of just the way the last couple of minutes have gone. Here is uh, Mo uh, Nairney coming forward for Leash. They still have possession, Leash, out towards this near side it comes. Running on to this one now, it's uh, Fiona Dooley. Fiona Dooley now finding Anna Healy. Anna Healy now back and torn to Fiona Dooley. Dooley now to Aron Fitzpatrick. Aron Fitzpatrick just outside the 45 meter line now. Here's Jane Moore coming, running forward, taking on the Armagh defence. It's still the midfielder running through the centre. They're not closing her down. She goes to ground and referee signals that, uh, well, he's given the free against Jane Moore in the end. And Armagh can breathe a collective sigh of relief. We're into well into injury time now at this stage and uh, can't be too long now before we hear referee Jonathan Murphy's half-time whistle. That uh, uh, free is taken short. Clodagh McCambridge now has it. Back out it comes. So Armagh now building from the back again. Pass in towards the middle. Still Armagh coming forward now. Looking, can they get another score before the break? Neve Marley, referee playing a good advantage. Still Neve Marley soloing forward with it. Neve Marley now just forced to hold it up. Looking for options, plays it down. 
Looking for one of our colleagues. That's a good catch. It's uh, Amy Mackin indeed trying to get round her marker. Swings on a sixpence and puts it over the crossbar. Excellent score from Amy Mackin. Well, we've seen her do, uh, taking on those opportunities and scoring time and time again. She really is a live wire. But uh, four goals and nine to three points. Um, Amy Mackin, obviously, they really start performing that Armagh forward line. But in fairness to the rest of the uh, Armagh attack, they're all chipping in this afternoon. But uh, Amy Mackin, really, she made that one look easy. But that's what she's capable of in those sort of situations, isn't it? She really did. And that wasn't an easy ball to take from the error that Neve Marley had given to her. And look, if you look at her scoring so far, she's 2.14, not including today. So, I mean, she is a lethal threat. And our, at least have stopped putting a sweeper on her. So... So here come Leash now as we continue now towards the half-time whistle. No sign of the half-time whistle just yet from the referee. Now here come uh, Leash coming forward with it now. It's with Anna Healy. Anna Healy now sidesteps that challenge. Still has it. Now offloads it as far as uh, Ron Fitzpatrick again. Ron Fitzpatrick now coming laterally across the field with it inside the 45 meter line. There is a, a player looking for it. It's Rachel Williams once again trying to walk herself into space. Still Rachel Williams flicks it inside and uh, Leash, this is uh, taking them a while to get that bit closer to the Armagh goals. That's a wild kick in the end and that one goes badly right and wide. So after all that, unfortunately for Emma Lawler, that was well off target. It goes down as Leash's first wide but uh, they've certainly had a few chances They've got a couple more scores on the board and uh, causing a little bit more trouble than they have for most of this first half. And from that uh, loose uh, kick out, they've got possession again. It was uh, Mo Nerny momentarily getting on to it now. But, uh, you just sense that uh, uh, Leash feel that perhaps there, uh, there is more scores in them. They have possession. Ball breaking now as far as Schiffra Haffel. Haffel now's possession to uh, Emma Lawler. Back out it comes now as far as Anna Healy once more. And uh, Armagh, as you can see, packing defence here at the moment, just uh, trying to frustrate uh, Leash a bit and push them further out the field. Here's Anna Healy up over the 45 metre line. It goes Rachel Williams scampering after this one to keep it in play. It does well. Anna Healy now picks it up. Two players surrounding her. Referee says there's uh, time for no more. And there is the half time whistle here at the Gaelic Grounds in Drada. It's a very big lead for Armagh at the break. Um, uh, helped on by that very significant win. Four goals and nine to three points. No doubting, I suppose, the merits of uh, Armagh superiority and the fact that they've been able to kick on get those scores little bit of hope before half time by Leash but the question is on the turnaround I mean the elements alone Kiva are not going to turn this game are not going to win this game for Leash no, look, they're not. But I mean, if Leash so, show the hard work that they have done in the first half, like they've kept their heads up, they've kept going, you know, they show patches of great play, good off the shoulder running, and maybe when they're in a little bit closer to goal because the wind will carry the ball, you, you don't know what might happen. But I can tell you, Armagh won't stop their work rate either, so they'll have to be contained as well. Yeah, you'd have to give Leash a, a bit of credit for the way they finished the half because they had only one score on the board up until, what, uh, 20, 29 minutes into the half, and then all of a sudden got the next day too. They have shown patches of what they're capable of, but as you say, whether it's going to be enough to turn on this round you'd have to seriously question that I just feel Arma always have a little bit more in the tank you know when they can turn it up a little bit more you know if Leash do prove that they can you know maybe give a little bit more I don't know like the great runners there and Rachel Williams um, Aaron Fitzpatrick very very good football you can see that there and Mo Nerny so if they get a little bit more opportunity you don't know what might happen Absolutely. So here at uh, half time, it's uh, Armagh with one foot in the Division 2, the uh, Little uh, National League Division 2 uh, final at this stage. Uh, they started the uh, better. They got the opening score through Neve Reel after three minutes and they kicked on from there. They got the goals from Amy Mackin after 12 and then Catherine Marley getting the second goal before the water break to leave a 2 4 to no score after 18 minutes. Uh, Leash coming back though with the opening score after the water break. Uh, Emma Lawler's free from close range, uh, getting them finally off the mark, but then Armagh dominated. Again, they had uh, other goal scoring opportunities. They took, uh, they got two more for themselves. Uh, the first of those uh, coming from Neve uh, Real, that was our third goal in total. And uh, then we had points from Aoife McCoy, Amy Mackin, uh, Neve Marley, McCoy once again, and Blahin Mackin then as well. And then those uh, couple of scores from Aaron Fitzpatrick and Rachel Williams, uh, four leash at the other end of the field against the run of play. But Amy Mackin then with one of the best scores of the half. That was the, that, that effort after 33 minutes proved the last score of the uh, first half. So Arma, well on course here for a place in the Division 2 final. They lead here at a very windy Gaelic grounds in Drogheda. The halftime score, it's Armagh 4 goals and 9 points. It's Leash 3 points. We'll be back to you in a few minutes with coverage of the second half.
And a very welcome back to the Gaelic grounds here in Drogheda. Yes, you join us here for the start of the second half. And at half time, it is uh, Armagh with that big lead for themselves. Just confirmation of at least one change here at half time. And uh, number 17, Eva Galvin, has come into the, uh, our, the uh, leash team for this uh, second half. It looks as if it is Shifra Haffel who has made uh, her way off. We'll just confirm that if we can, but that's the change that it looks. Anyway, 17 is on for Leash. And now, uh, well, Leash looking to hit the ground running. And they're coming on the attack here is Aron Fitzpatrick with an early opportunity. That's the start that they craved, and they've got the start. And it's Aron Fitzpatrick right from the uh, throw-in, managing to get the uh, first score of the uh, second half. And, uh, well, more of that will do very nicely for uh, Leash now trying to build a little bit of momentum with this very strong wee, uh, breeze at their back so the very first minute and it's our own Fitzpatrick who gets the opening score of the uh, second half and from that uh, kick out and uh, just as the uh, leash goalkeeper Ema Barry had to try and deal with that breeze from those kick outs in the first half uh, Anna Carr is going to have to do exactly the same now as well uh, for uh, Armagh but here come now the Orchard County they've got it now through Amy Mackin Amy Mackin up over the 45 metre line still soloing forward with it and uh, still staying on her feet and holding her ground well she's uh, well going to settle for the fisted uh, point but she hasn't got it it's gone left and wide promising there from Amy Mackin cutting in down that left hand side and inside but the final execution off target and so it stays 4-9 to 4 points but uh, Leash with the opening score in the very early stages, that kick out that finds its way as far as uh, Catherine Marley. Catherine Marley now, a player on the overlap, it's Neve uh, Coleman. Neve Coleman now finding Amy Mackin. Amy Mackin fancies this one, goes for the score, and that's an excellent score from uh, Amy Mackin. Well, she didn't get the fisted one from close range, but she's got this one from further out with the left peg, puts it over the crossbar, four goals and ten to uh, four points. And uh, just as Leash uh, got that opening score, now they've conceded. Uh, one at the other end as uh, Ima Barry gets that one over the 45 metre line but it is uh, Armagh picking up this uh, loose one and they're coming forward now with it once again and it's with Blohan Mackin inside it goes now another promising uh, layoff and it's a promising chance here for uh, Nolan that's in the back of the net and it's Aoife McCoy who has got the goal Aoife McCoy and another goal for uh, Armagh from the kick out they walk the ball inside Aoife McCoy taking it on and now a fifth goal for Armagh here five goals and ten points to four points two minutes into the second half and uh, after a very promising start at the other end now giving away a, a point and now a goal uh, that's not that's exactly what Leash didn't want at the start of the second half Kiva yeah I was going to say is that Leash's statement of intent there at the start but uh, Armagh have come back really well there Neve Marley won that kick out um, up against Jane Moore who I thought had been feeling the ball fantastically in the first half um, great piece of play by Armagh and a good direct running by Aoife McCoy which is really good at Absolutely. So another goal for uh, Armagh. Well, we mentioned that uh, they weren't earlier on perhaps putting matches to bed and weren't b b uh, winning them uh, all that convincingly and not putting teams away. But uh, that uh, certainly looks as if that's what they're doing here this afternoon with a very big lead for themselves. And uh, this is the uh, second uh, match in this campaign that they've scored five goals. They scored 5-9 in the round one win over Tyrone. So they've matched that in terms of goals in this game and there's still a long way to go and don't rule out them getting a few more as well. Uh, because they do look very capable of finding that uh, the back of the net and they're coming forward now once again here's Blohan uh, Mack and goes to ground picks the ball up dusts herself down she's got a player on the overlap this is uh, Neve Real Neve Real now one of the earlier uh, goal scorers sending this one in but that one is gone right and wide from Neve Real but uh, this game only looking really as if it's going in one direction five goals and ten to four points we've already had uh, Donegal uh, winning in Division 1 against Dublin. Big breakthrough for Donegal. Big result for them in the uh, first match at Clonus. Mead and Mayo coming up as well from uh, 3 o'clock. That'll be starting in a few minutes' time. The All-Ireland Champions back in action May Mead this afternoon down at St. Tienrox Park. As uh, Leash now from this uh, kick-out have possession with Clodagh Dunn. There will be a temptation, I'm sure, as well, particularly by uh, Ronan Murphy to the um, our man manager to start uh, probably making some changes to his team with that uh, Division 2 final now on the horizon and trying to give uh, some of his fringe players, some of his substitutes, uh, some valuable game time now just to get them into the run of things. And uh, here, here's uh, Neve Coleman now through the centre. Neve Coleman now proving impossible to stop here. She swings it in and puts it over the crossbar. Another score for our man and another point for Neve Coleman. And that one now makes it five goals and 11 to four points. So it is turning into, well, very much one-way traffic here at the moment. So just uh, brief spells of we've seen of what Leach are capable of, but 
you feel that uh, they needed to really hit the ground running at the start of the second half it started very well for them with that very early score from Maroon Fitzpatrick but it has gone pear shape since they've given away now the last three scores including that fifth goal the Aoife McCoy goal and uh, the referee blowing his whistle what I can't understand, Colm, is why the goalkeeper for Leash won't kick the ball long using that breeze. She did it in the first half against the breeze. You know, with such a good failure of the ball in Jane Moore, I don't understand why they're not kicking the ball longer. So, yeah, short uh, kick out so far from uh, Emer Barry. But she has that very strong wind at her back. The referee now having wards with uh, his one of his uh, linesmen. And... Uh, no, he's, uh, I think he's uh, happy enough to let play continue. So it's that free for Leash floated up over halfway. The whistle goes again. And uh, it's going to be a free this time for uh, Armagh. And it's going to be taken by Blahan Mackin. And uh, referee now happy to let play continue now. It's with Tierna Grimes running forward with this one. Um, I come in the attack, it's with Neve Marley. Neve Marley now sending this one forward. Here's Tierna Grimes getting the return pass. That's an inviting looking ball in towards uh, the space. There's another chance of a goal back of the net, and it's Catherine Marley who's got the goal. Another goal for uh, for Armagh. Catherine Marley with it this time. Six goals and 11 points to four points, starting now to really getting embarrassing for Leash here. They've given away yet another goal, and it's Catherine Marley who has got it. And uh, six minutes gone in the second half here and Armagh well you said before half time that they're not going to rest in the laurels here they're going to push on and try to really uh, put out a statement in this uh, game that's exactly what they're doing here at the moment they're not relenting they have 6-11 but they're not happy to sit back on this lead they're coming forward now with it again ball now in the possession of Aoife McCoy Aoife McCoy now still coming forward just dropped it there for a second but gets, uh, gets her composure back has possession back Player on the overlap, said she said to uh, send it in towards the centre. It's with uh, Kate Toe now. And that ball just dropped for a second. Kate Toe gets it back though. That ball flicked in and again. Player getting in behind the back of the leash defence. And that one is sent in and it's over the crossbar. Another score for uh, for Armagh. I think it's Amy McEnany who has got it. Yeah, but I would have to give that to Eve Lavery. A fantastic weighted hand pass just straight into the arms of Amy McEnany. She must have really wanted a fisted hand pass uh, score because she didn't get one the first, but she got the second time. Yeah, she missed the early one, but makes no mistake on that second opportunity. And six goals and 12 points to uh, four points. And this is well turning into a steep learning curve here for Leash, who of course uh, came out of Division 3 last season. It's a big step up in divisions here today. They've done extremely well to get to these, uh, this uh, semi-final, but it looks as if that's as good as it's going to get here in this league campaign. As our man now with a lot of space for Neve Marley now to exploit. She sends it long, looking to pick out uh, Neve, uh, or Amy Mackin rather, but that doesn't uh, reach its intended target, but it falls back nicely towards uh, Neve Coleman. Ball now on this near side of the field, trying to wrestle possession back for our man was Neve Real, but it's been won by Rachel Williams. Rachel Williams now. And a rare sortie up the field here by Leash. They've been starved of it. The Leash forwards have been starved of possession really since that opening score. And it's really all Armagh here at the moment. Clodagh McCambridge now sending it on as far as Blahin Mackin. Skips past the challenge here. Swats away the challenge of uh, of uh, Rachel Williams. She's still coming forward now. Blahin Mackin. What's she going to do with this one? Fisting it into space. That one, uh, oh, and it's uh, well, a good dummy in the end and a shoulder as well from uh, Emer Barry. It was Neve Real, Real who was waiting for the pass. Didn't quite work out. But six goals and 12 points to uh, four points. And uh, what is this going to do? I think we can start talking about a final now for uh, for this Armagh team, uh, Kiva. A performance like this and to be notching up such a big score as well in terms of confidence, what is it going to do for these girls? It's going to be great for Armagh. Um, I've said before, you know, I was a bit worried about them in the campaign previously because they just hadn't really been convincingly beaten teams as well as I would have liked the two, them to with the quality of players that they have but you know they're going to peak at the right time here so it's very exciting to watch this and um, they're still working really really hard um, and, and they're not going to rest in their laurels here. Absolutely and that ball won by Lauren McConville just momentarily though but uh, Rowan Fitzpatrick has won it back player calling for it that's the substitute that's uh, Eva Galvin the half time replacement that one is sent in and that one comes back down well again they would walk the same uh, post again uh, coming to a team's rescue this time our Ma's rescue uh, Del will be there with Anna Carr who hasn't had too much to do in this second half so far she was alert enough though on that occasion here is Lauren McConville coming running forward now for our Ma. so uh, Arma can start planning. Ronan Murphy and his team. Ronan Murphy now into his third uh, term. The Tyrone native as manager of this Arma team. He'd be delighted with the application so far in this match. The way his team have gone about their business. And uh, seizing the initiative with that uh, strong breeze of their backs in the first half. Taking their goal opportunities. Not all perfect but 
and say he's uh, nonetheless very uh, happy enough with uh, the overall uh, uh, way his team have gone about their business this afternoon and now he can uh, start planning towards that Division 2 uh, final and a real crack at getting into back into Division 1 and running through the centre now it's Aoife McCoy another goal perhaps chance on here just dropped it at the vital second trying to get a, get the ball back on her toe does well McCoy has support if she needs as well Neve Coleman is uh, close to her referee signals that He's actually going to, I think he's uh, going to, he's either going to hop it here or he's going to give the free out, I think. And uh, there's going to be a change here on the Armagh team. So now they are perhaps going to start emptying their bench. And uh, first Armagh change of the afternoon. Referee taking note of a name. Fanula McKenna for Neve Reel. So Neve Reel is coming off and it's... Uh, no, Aoife Lennon, sorry. So uh, Aoife Lennon is uh, is uh, coming in wearing number 22. First change of the uh, afternoon then for Armagh. And uh, your own sisters, uh, Neve and Catherine, there was uh, rugby duties tomorrow for them. Tell me a little bit about that, uh, uh, Kiva. So uh, Neve and Sarah decided in the off-season of Gaelic football that they would take up the rugby and they've really thoroughly enjoyed it and have been treated so well by Dungallon Rugby Club and they play tomorrow in the semi-final of the Junior Cup. OK, so best of luck to both girls tomorrow in the rugby for Dungannon. Here is the uh, hot ball and uh, it's Armagh who take full advantage of it, gaining possession. Neve Marley on cue there, Colm. So, yeah, so there you are, we're just talking about Neve Marley. So uh, we're putting that one over the crossbar, extending Armagh's lead to six goals and 13 points to four points. And uh, no stopping Neve Marley, no stopping these Armagh girls here at the moment. Still going at it here and still looking for more scores and uh, pushing home their advantage all the time. And uh, Leash, uh, despite their best efforts, showed that little bit of promise before half time, but really left themselves with far much too much to do in that uh, opening half. And this has been a real harsh lesson for them, but uh, they're not giving up. They're still looking for opportunities. Here is Emma Lawler now. This one is, she'd do well to keep it in play. Soccer style, she does well. Just about kept it from going out over the uh, uh, far uh, sideline or the end line. Back out it comes. Could be a chance on here. That one is swung in and that one is gone over the crossbar. That's more like it for, uh, for Leash. It's a point for them and it's their corner forward. It's Mo Nearney who has got it. That's their toward point in this game from play. Mo Nearney now makes it. Uh, what six goals and 13 points to five points so Mo Nearney with that point 12 minutes into this into this uh, into this second half Leash uh, will be back in the intermediate the All-Ireland Intermediate Championship uh, this season last season they reached the semi-finals losing out to Wexford at the semi-final stage 2-11 to 2-9 the full-time score in that game so they'll be hoping to give the intermediate a good rattle once again Donny Brennan is uh, still their uh, manager that ball now and uh, again, another example there of that very stiff breeze and uh, it goes out of play and a car's uh, uh, kick out, not staying in play and it's a line ball for a leash. So uh, the ball now about to be taken, this line ball for by uh, Aaron Fitzpatrick, plays it uh, right back towards the centre, towards this near side and uh, it's Ellen Healy now has it, Ellen Healy now. Across the, uh, across the field it goes, asking a bit there of uh, her teammate, but they do well in the end. Jane Moore now has it, Jane Moore, and uh, she uh, looks very strong and uh, a good uh, fielder of the ball as well. Jane Moore, now it's with uh, Laura Marie Maher, back out it comes again. Here's uh, Anna Healy who has it, Anna Healy. Leisha will be just looking to probably put a little bit of respectability in the scoreboard. They'll uh, not want to finish with just six points on the board, particularly with this strong breeze at the backs. So uh, a little bit of damage limitation, let's say. That's not a good effort, though close to goal. All too easy there for Anna Carr, who really hadn't have made the save. It was more like a, almost like a back pass there in the end. And uh, Armagh coming, storming out of defence now once again. Here's Sean Agrena coming on to it. Sean Agrena gets it back to uh, Neve Marley. Very impressive. Neve Marley really likes to, a huge amount of work she's getting through. Here is uh, Sean Agrena, gets the return pass. Sean Agrena, can she finish it off with a point? Back out it comes. Here's the substitute now could be a chance on here for Armagh to get point number 14 on the board here it comes out it uh, in it goes on oh, it comes back off the woodwork back off the crossbar in fact it was Tierna Grimes with that opportunity well uh, no harm I suppose trying your luck from that distance and that uh, remember as well that was uh, that was into the breeze as well so she got good distance on a Tierna Grimes which didn't just have the accuracy in the end and just didn't have the distance now it's with uh, Laura Marie Marr for uh, Leash up towards this near side of the field two players giving chase after this one picked up in the end by uh, Mo Nearney Nearney now sending it forward to Rowan Fitzpatrick again tries to flick that ball over the Armagh player's head and Eve Marley's head it was here is uh, uh, Laura Marie Marr once again now back to Rowan Fitzpatrick, fancies her chances, Rowan Fitzpatrick, that's looking good and that is over the crossbar, Rowan Fitzpatrick who got the opening score of the second half 
and uh, she gets her second point of the second half to make it now six goals and 13 points to uh, to seven points that's how it stands here with a quarter of an hour gone in the second half and again the uh, uh, wind playing havoc with that kick out there from uh, Anna Carr but it's in play and it's with uh, Tierna Grimes now coming forward with this one Tierna Grimes Tierna Grimes still racing forward with it now nobody coming to challenge her the uh, leash defence backing off her now it's with the substitute it's uh, Aoife Lennon in possession Aoife Lennon now offloads it here is Amy Mackin trying to work herself uh, into a scoring position the Armagh captain seems to have the measure of her marker goes for the score and another going for a spectacular one <laughs> she's got it as well excellent score from Amy Mackin she's such a slippery customer isn't she really and uh, worked herself in she knew exactly what she was doing I fancy her chances and uh, puts it over the crossbar. Six goals and 14 to seven points. I think our mass supporters can really rest easy at this stage, Kiva. Yes, they'll be sitting watching the match quite happy now, uh, thinking about a, a final in a couple of weeks' time. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, great for Arma uh, for the county in general now that they have that uh, Division 2 final to uh, look forward to. Exact arrangements just to be confirmed, and of course our final opponents have to be confirmed. We know that by uh, tomorrow evening when the other semi-final takes place, but uh, it will be a step up. I think you can take that for granted that it will be a step up from what they've faced here this afternoon. Uh, Kerry obviously very strong, uh, they see as well that... Uh, Sarah, Mar Sarah Marley has uh, come into the action here as well for Armagh. Here's a chance for uh, Leash to get a score. Another score on the board. That one's went over. It's Laura uh, Marie Marr who's got the point. Another score for uh, for Leash. That now brings them on to eight points. And that makes it now six goals and 14 to eight points with 16 minutes gone in this uh, in this uh, second half. So it is uh, Laura Marie Marr with that point. And yes, uh, Sarah Marley has uh, come into the action. And uh, that kick out. And... Uh, that was uh, an easy one indeed, uh, an easy collect there for Arma from that uh, kick out. Now it's with uh, uh, Kate Toe who has it. In fact, it's, uh, it was Sarah Marley, I should say, with 17 on her back coming into that uh, Arma defence now for the remainder of this game, trying to barge her way through there was Catherine Marley. She's done well. She's up over the 45 metre line. She might uh, fancy taking on this one. She has a player on the overlap. She goes for the pass out towards the substitute. Could be another goal chance on here. Happy to take a point and it's over the crossbar. Aoife Lennon has got the point. Aoife Lennon with the score, but the spade work there, if you like, done and the brilliant the build up work done by Catherine Marley and Aoife Lennon, the player who's got the score at the end of it all. That now makes it six goals and 15 points to eight points. Final score there, Colin, was a great exchange of the sisters. Came from Sarah to Neve to Catherine, all the way to Aoife Lennon, so it was a lovely exchange of play. Yeah, you Marley, Marley written all over it. <laughs> uh, yeah, excellent, excellent in the end, and uh, well taken score. Uh, in the end by Arma and that's the last uh, point before the second and final water break so six goals and 15 points to uh, eight points so the uh, the comeback that uh, Leash needed in the third quarter has not materialised they got that opening score uh, just literally seconds into the second half from Maroon Fitzpatrick but that really as good as it's got now they have tagged on a few scores since uh, but uh, never enough really to put Arma under any kind of real pressure and those uh, goals from Aoife McCoy and then the uh, sixth one coming from Catherine Marley really putting this game to bed so six goals and 15 to uh, eight points uh, just a word on the other two teams uh, Kerry and Monaghan playing in the other semi-final uh, from what the results we've seen and the performances we've seen so far um, Kerry were the favourites in that other semi-final Kiva. Yeah most definitely I mean Kerry have put up a really good campaign on the other side good strong physical outfit and you know they'll put a good test up to what you would think would be Armagh here um, yeah it should be a battle in the final yeah, that uh, other semi-final taking place in Tume uh, tomorrow afternoon as uh, the teams now break away from the last water break and ready now for the last 12 or 13 minutes of this game but the outcome really in no doubt and it will be Arma advancing to that Division 1 final and a chance to, a chance to have a real cut as, uh, as uh, earning promotion to Division 1 and just a change uh, being made, uh, just confirmation of another change now being made. We'll uh, confirm that if we can in just a moment as uh, the uh, kick out now will be taken by the uh, leash goalkeeper Emer Barry. So inside now the last uh, quarter of this game here at a sunny Gaelic grounds. But uh, don't let the sun fool you into thinking that it's the ideal conditions here because that wind has been very strong right from the start of this game. Here comes the kick out now and it is an Arma change. It's Megan McCann wearing number 19 is into the action and it's Eve Lavery is the player that has gone off. That's the change on the uh, Arma team. 
And uh, Leash now coming out from defence with this one. They have it with uh, Amy Kelly, the team captain. Now it's with Amy Potts, our full back, trying to get around the challenge there of uh, Aoife McCoy. Leash, Leash doing well. It's with Anna Healy now. Anna Healy now thought about going for the pass, but she took a little bit too much out of it. But she might be able to pick up that loose ball. She does that exactly. That's exactly what she does. Laura Mary Mar now chipping that ball low fo forward. And still uh, Leash in possession. Ball played up over the 45 metre line. And uh, good uh, play by the Armagh fullback, Claude McCambridge. Back to our goalkeeper, Anna Carr. And now she flicks it out towards this near side. So danger reverted there for Armagh. And uh, now raiding down this near side, Blahin Macken. And again, huge work being done by Blahin Macken out towards this near side. She picks out Catherine Marley again. Catherine Marley just didn't control it. Intercepted by Fiona Dooley, who got a boot uh, through that one and does well. Now it's with uh, Laura Marie Mars get past that challenge. So uh, can Leash now, can they put it for the bit of respectability on the scoreboard now in the last 10 minutes or so? They have nothing to lose really. Just have to try and uh, go for it and as they try to narrow the deficit and try to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit closer, let's say, but uh, really from a long way out. Uh, just hasn't really happened for them and that ball now intercepted so that uh, chance has uh, been missed and now it's with Amy Mackin. Amy Mackin now trying to skip past our uh, marker, plays that ball into space up towards the substitute. It's Aoife Lennon who has it now, can she get among the goals? Does well, uh, that one is blocked down, she might have a second by the cherry. She's been smothered out of it there, three or four blue shorts around her and the leash defence on that occasion doing its job well. Fiona Dooley now intercepting it, that ball played forward, loose one out of defence though and it's given possession straight back to Claudia McCambridge. She's still coming running forward with it, this is danger here, it's uh, the midfielder in fact it is uh, Neve Marley and yeah. it is in the back of the net. I think it's Blahin It's actually Blahin Macken, <laughs> it is Blahin Macken in fact, it is a goal. Well, it was given away by Leash and it's Blahin Macken in fact, we mentioned her there moments ago, her work rate in this team, absolutely exceptional and she's raced through and she's got goal number seven, seven goals and 15 points to eight points and uh, another change, change being made now in the Leash team, 21, that's Roisin Larkin is coming in, so seven goals and 15 points to eight points and Blahin Macken with the latest uh, Armagh goal. Well, Armagh starting this game as uh, favourites, firm favourites, uh, but uh, whether they were expected to win by this margin, I'm not too sure. There's another change now. It's uh, Catherine Marley is coming off. Gronje Boylan. And uh, Gronje Boylan wearing number 24 is coming on. So Catherine, I suppose she can turn one eye now to that rugby semi-final for Dungannon tomorrow. That's what that's her next port of call, let's say. And uh, I noticed as well, I think Shifra Haffel, or there's... She's a, gone, yeah. Yeah, she's gone. That's another change in the Leash team. So both uh, managers now beginning to empty their bench now as this uh, match heads towards the last eight or nine minutes as uh, giving chase after this one, the Leash substitute. That is uh, Anna Moore. Anna Moore, though, uh, the referee has blown his whistle and it is going to be a free. It's called playback. It's going to be a Leash free. So a free for Leash and it's going to be taken short by uh, Aaron Fitzpatrick. Up it goes now to Fiona Dooley. Dooley now just holding it up, looking for support. Rachel Williams is free in this near side. And she collects the pass. Still Rachel Williams has looked pretty lively down this uh, left wing. And uh, that ball played Aaron Fitzpatrick now in possession once again. Now can she make that angle for herself? It takes a deflection off an arm hand. But uh, on the follow-up, and it's in the back of the net. Aaron Fitzpatrick gets the goal. Well taken goal, and uh, Anna Carr didn't look as if she knew much about it. Came in pretty fast, and her own Fitzpatrick sticks it in the back of the net, and it is a goal. Another change being made on the on the uh, on the uh, 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 the leash team, but it's a goal. It's her own Fitzpatrick who has got the goal, so they have managed to get a major in this game. Seven goals and fifteen to one goal and eight, and her own Fitzpatrick has probably looked the pick of the leash forwards in this game, and. Uh, she did so well to control the ball. As it, was it looked as though it was going away from her on the left-hand side and she took it in and around the tackle. It was a great individual effort for goal. Yes, nice bit of play there by your own Fitzpatrick. A very experienced player, part of the University Limerick, the O'Connor Cup uh, team of uh, last week. And uh, that ball again just being pulled back uh, by the very strong breeze. But Armagh have got their hands on it. It's with uh, Lauren McConville flicked inside now. Armagh coming forward with it. The substitute, uh, Sarah Marley now getting her hands on it as well. And she stayed forward. That ball played dangerously up towards. And uh, this could be an opportunity on here. It's uh, Gronje Boylan who has it. Gronje Boylan getting it back. Another opportunity here. This one is taken on and this one has gone left and wide. And it was Sarah Marley with that opportunity. But it's gone. It's tailed off to the left-hand side and wide. So it stays seven goals and 15 points to one goal and eight. Ball played up over the 45. The referee signals that kick-out is going to have to be taken again. 
So another uh, Emer Barry having to retake this uh, kick out with our tra team trailing as they have been from the early stages of the, this game. Out towards our full back it goes. Here's Amy Potts. Amy Potts now trying to get around the challenge. Still Amy Potts finding herself a little bit isolated now and she's lost possession and it's been wrestled back by Armagh. Again Armagh just chasing absolutely everything here. They're not uh, happy to sit back. They're still going for more scores. Even though they've got 17, 7, 15 on the board so far in this game, with still, what about five, six minutes or so to play here at the Gaelic Grounds in Drogheda. Out towards the near side it comes, getting a hands on there with Sean and Gray. Up it goes to, uh, to Blohin Mackin once again. Now a chance for another score, and this one is sent in, and that's over the crossbar. And it is Aoife Lennon. Aoife Lennon, she had a couple of earlier opportunities, and now she has, gosh, that's her second point indeed since her introduction. And Aoife Lennon makes it seven goals and 16 points to one goal and eight. And uh, I see uh, Brianna Mathers, the, there's actually a change of goalkeeper here. So we mentioned about giving, I suppose, players match time, a bit of experience now. And uh, I suppose that's no real, no real surprise uh, to a degree that uh, a change of goalkeepers at this stage of the game with the scoreboard, the way it's reading uh, Kiva is to give uh, Brianna Mathers now a little bit of uh, game time here and a bit of uh, big, um, big match experience. Yes, as far as I can hear, Brianna's been doing very, very well at training. And I mean, Anna is a first class goalkeeper, but Brianna is putting her to the test and keeping it very competitive within the Armagh squad. So it's great to see that you can get your keepers, you know, rotated a wee bit. So Emar Barry with this uh, kick out as the clock now begins to tick down into the last four minutes here in Drogheda. As uh, Leash now gets trying to get their hands on it. Rachel Williams there trying to desperately to catch that ball but didn't quite walk out for it. And Armagh have turned it over once more. Now it's with Tierna Grimes and for coming forward again down that uh, left wing this time in towards the centre. This one now, Gronya Boylan has it. Gronya Boylan fancies her chances, goes for the score. But that one has tailed off to the right-hand side this time and wide. And they make that, uh, that's wide number two for Armagh. But they'd be very happy with their scoring rate. Seven goals and 16 points to 1-8 they lead. And uh, everything clicking into place here in front of the post for Armagh today. Doing a real professional job, let's say, in this game. Going about it from an early stage. Building up that very sizable lead in the first half with the advantage of the elements. And really, Leash never really raising much of a gallop in this game, you'd have to say. Very, very briefly, this one is played through the middle. This is uh, promising now once again for uh, Leash. Can they pick off a score off it? A couple of players looking for possession. This is a goal chance uh, deflected away. It was uh, Sarah Quigley who got possession, but the Yama defence doing its job eventually. And uh, out towards the near side it comes. And uh, under a bit of pressure there was Sarah Marley. Referee blows his whistle and the free has been given a free out. Well, Leash almost in there for a second, a goal for themselves. That would uh, have uh, added to their tally of 1-8, but didn't quite uh, work out for them. I just feel Leash take the wrong options at very vital times. Their own Fitzpat Fitzpatrick should have took that ball on in a little bit herself, you know, and drew the player a little bit more and then flicked it on. Well, here is Brina Mathers now, the uh, the uh, Armagh sub-goalkeeper in for the last few minutes of this match. Here's... Uh, Kate Toe now in possession for Armagh on our own 45 metre line. A couple of players trying to wrestle possession away from her, away from her but uh, that ball is played forward. Armagh still have it. The ball on the ground now. Uh, Amy Kelly, the leash captain, has won the free. Won the winning the free there off Neve Coleman, taken quickly. Now it's with Anna Healy coming forward with it. Now it's a substitute. Anna Moore in possession. That ball played up over the 45 metre line. Can Leash now, can they pick off another score? It's with uh, Laura Mary Maher. Referee has blown his whistle. And that's going to be a free. And Bit of a rash tackle from Blahin Mackin there. He needs to discipline Dharma as well. So Blahin Mackin now giving away this free and a chance for Leash to tag on a score. And it's uh, Aron Fitzpatrick who is lining this one up. It's not in fact Aron Fitzpatrick. I think it's Laura Marie Marr herself. It is. Uh, this one is sent in. It's uh, Mo Nerny indeed the player in the end. Yeah, Mo Nerny has got the yeah the white flag goes up and it's Mo Nerny with the score. So another score for Leash that now makes it seven goals and 16 points to a goal and nine. With time now rapidly running out here at the Gaelic Grounds. We're inside the last two minutes of normal time as uh, Brina Mathers takes this uh, kick. That's a good, uh, that's a decent kick uh, up over the 45 metre line into that very stiff uh, breeze. And Armagh 
continue to move forward with it. That one chipped down by Amy Mackin into space. Armagh now coming forward now from that uh, kick out. Ball played into space again. Here's Ethan McCoy. McCoy now inside the 20 metre line. Offloads it. Goes uh, that score. It's Gronya Boylan who has got the score. It's over the crossbar. Gronya Boylan with the point. And uh, that now makes it seven goals and 17 points to a goal and nine. With a couple of minutes to go here, Colm, you have to be very, very impressed with Armagh's work rate and their speed. You know, with two minutes to go and they're still like lightning here, passing the ball, working the scores. Very impressive. Absolutely, yes. Well, Ronan Murphy, as we mentioned, will be taking a lot from this uh, performance. He, know that, uh, he knows that uh, it will be a different uh, final, of course. The quality will be a bit better, as you would expect, in a final. Kerry or uh, Monaghan in a couple of weeks' time. But Armagh have gone about their business in good style this afternoon, as much as you could have hoped for in this performance. And uh, they're still piling forward now, looking to push uh, the final nail in the leash coffin, if you like. Here's uh, it's Amy Mackin, but that one is off target. And it's gone left and wide. Wide number three in the second half for Armagh. We've crossed the half-hour mark now. So we're into the injury time at the end of this game as the uh, short kick out is taken by uh, Emma Barry to uh, Amy Kelly so this is where Leash's Division 2 campaign will come to an end no disgrace uh, in in, uh, in reaching this stage of the uh, competition they'll be probably a bit disappointed with the amount of scores that they've conceded in this game they would have been hoping for a much closer contest forever about winning the game but they'll be, they won't be too happy with uh, the amount of scores they've conceded um, but uh, Armagh, they're a seasoned team and uh, here comes uh, another opportunity and it's Mo Nearney swinging it in and over the crossbar. That could well be the last uh, score of the game. Seven goals and 17 points to one goal and uh, 10. So 7-17 to 1-10. I think we've uh, four minutes, as I think I think the, uh, that has been announced uh, for injury time. So still, we'll be played one of those. So we've about three minutes, I would say, about three minutes left here and this uh, first semi-final as uh, Brina Mathers contemplates this short kick out she goes through the middle with it and uh, that one is sent uh, on sent long and uh, controlled well by the leash substitute Anna Moore Anna Moore flicking it on to Jane Moore the two sisters combining well on that occasion in towards the middle now here's Laura Marie uh, Maru has it flicking it forward gets the return pass has a look up at the post decides to run it on another little bit Bring it a little bit closer to goal, sending it in, and that one is sent in, and it's gone across the face of the goal, and it's gone left and wide. So a wide, and it stays 7 17 to a goal, and a goal, and well, the scoreboard has stayed 1 9, I've made it 1 goal and 10, but uh, not going to make not going to make that much difference anyway. We'll go with the scoreboard 7 17 to 1 9. And uh, another change. I think being made, I just see that uh, Catherine Marley, uh, Catherine Marley is, uh, or was she, she actually, I think she was off already, she, is, she, off, she yeah. is off, she's gone off the field. So now from that kick out, ball played forward as Armagh come pressing again. Grace Ferguson didn't quite work out for her there and she uh, loses possession. Now it's uh, with uh, Eva Galvin, the leash substitute, but that's not a good pass. Referee playing the advantage now for Armagh. Still with his hand raised. Coming out with it is, uh, is uh, Kate Toe. Referee now signals that that's going to have to be uh, it's going to be a free for Armagh. It's going to have to be taken out just outside the 45 metre line. It's going to be Claude McCambridge to take it. So time now almost up here at the Gaelic grounds. We've almost played the three minutes at this stage, three of the four minutes. And... Uh, Waiting for the kick now to be taken. Referee just taking a note of a name. There's another change on the Leash team. I see that uh, Rachel Williams is coming off the field for uh, Leash. That free taken short up to uh, Neve Marley. Neve Marley now getting the pass in. Played up towards the opposite 45. Here's uh, Gronya Boylan already with one score to her credit in this uh, second half since coming on as a substitute. Up it goes now. This is danger. Could be another uh, chance on here and another score than it is. And it's put over the crossbar. Aoife Lennon with another point. That now makes it seven goals. Seven goals and uh, seven goals and 19 to a goal and nine. Seven 19 to one nine. And uh, still we're waiting the referee's full time whistle. And uh, it may well arrive from this kick out. Not just yet though, Emer Barry. Down this near side it goes. Flicked on. Leash coming forward now from that kick out. They have it with uh, Amy Kelly. Amy Kelly now referee again playing the advantage. Laura Marie Marr has it. 
sending it on over towards uh, our own Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick now just holding it up, goes for the pass, picking out Jane Moore in there. Jane Moore forward up over the 45 metre line. Jane Moore stayed forward. And uh, Leash now in possession. Out towards the near side, Anna Moore. Anna Moore gets the pass away, picking out Mo Nerny. Mo Nerny back in turn now. Leash is still another score than before. We hear the full time whistle. Anna Healy looking for the return pass. Runs back as far as Anna Moore again. Still Leash. Playing it through the hands here, getting plenty of players involved. Roisin Larkin now getting her hands on it as well. But uh, they're still a long way from the Armagh goals. I um, think Leash play the ball too slow and it allows Armagh to set the wall up and it's very hard for Leash to get through. Here's uh, Ellen Healy now looking for a bit of space. Dropped it for a second. Comes back as far as uh, Anna Moore again. Anna Moore just trying to regain her composure. And that one bro has broken down the final pass. Not as it needed to be and Armagh have won the free down this near side of the field it comes and Armagh now running on to this one player getting a hands Gronia Boylan back out there giving a dig out to her defence and now it's with Blahina Mackin plays it into uh, space just goes over the head there of uh, Amy Mackin and just didn't uh, just didn't walk out for Amy on that occasion and there I think is the full time whistle referee uh, Jonathan Murphy says there's time for no more and there it is a victory and a very handsome victory in the end here for Armagh the scoreboard reading 7 goals and 19 points to 1 goal and 9 not much you could fault in this Armagh performance uh, Kiva they went at it really from the first whistle they built up the big lead before half time with the advantage of the elements and uh, Leash you just never felt that it was it really in them little, little glimpses of what they were capable of but uh, they look to be a, a big difference in uh, quality and class between the team two teams here this afternoon Well I suppose when you look at it Leash has come up from Division 3 and looking at the positives for them they're in a Division 2 semi-final and they did show glimpses of good play I think they got their tactics wrong in the second half they should have been using that breeze Armagh very polished performance so impressive intensity throughout and a great variety of scorers so you know they're sitting in a good place going into this final and the fact that they kept going at it they, they didn't really rest on their laurels briefly maybe just before half time to give away a couple of points but I suppose the half time uh, Armagh the refocused again and really absolutely relentless in that second half very relentless that's the word for it you know I mean they were playing in the last few minutes of the game like they were in the first few minutes so you know that's something to really really build upon and be positive about for Armagh in terms of performances all over the field a lot of players uh, really getting involved getting on the score sheet Neve Marley Blind Mack in the centre of the field Amy Mackin didn't probably need to be as prominent today as she as, as she usually is because there was plenty of other players stepping up to the mark which is great to see you know because a lot of teams are now wise to Amy Mackin she's still a fantastic player but it's good to see other players coming into the four and the variety of scores that you have there and confidence will build with those players great to see Aoife McCoy playing so well even Neve Reel Catherine Marley you know all of those players and the defence sometimes you know the ball wasn't down their end a lot but they stayed switched on Clodagh McCambridge out to every ball first time you know Lauren McConville so a very positive performance from Armagh overall and just a word uh, Leash as you say a big step up for them today Jane Moore some excellent feeling particularly during the first half very prominent couple of other decent performances as well from, from them yeah Mo Nerney as well Irone Fitzpatrick you know you can see you know she's an O'Connor Cup winner there she was very calm and collected on the ball Rachel Williams um, did really really strong running from the back line Amy Potts you know I mean they, they did a good job on Amy as well Amy Mackin so, you know, a lot of positives there for Leash and they'll go back to the drawing board and build upon that for next year. Absolutely. Well, it's our mass day here. They're just uh, regrouping at the centre of the field here in their huddle. And, uh, well, they now have that uh, Lidl Division 2 National League final to look forward to in a couple of uh, weeks' time against the winners of tomorrow's clash between uh, Kerry or uh, Mon and they clash tomorrow in tune. But uh, for, from the moment here on the Gaelic Grounds in Drada, my thanks to my co-commentator here today, uh, former RMA star Kiva Marley Morgan. She's seen her native county progress to that final in a fortnight's time and they've done it with plenty to spare the final score here at the Gaelic Rounds in Drogheda in the Little Ladies National Football League semi-final it's finished 7 goals and 19 points for Armagh Leash 1 goal and 9